Today we are going to be talking about the most frequently asked questions that I get on buying a home in a 55 and over community. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Krista Tarns and I've been selling real estate in the Central Florida area since 2009. I've already done a few videos on 55 and better communities, which I will be linking throughout this video above. If you have further questions as we're going through this information, please feel free to call or email me or set up a Zoom call, which you can do in the description under this video. And if you're watching on a cell phone, you just click on the title of this video and all of that information is going to generate for you. Let's jump right in. A 55 and older community is a specific type of community created under local ordinances. Generally, these communities require that at least one person over the age of 55 lives in the home, often with requirements that people under a certain age may not live in the home or can only be in the home a limited number of days per year. These communities are not retirement homes, but rather areas that are marketed towards active adults who are looking to spend their later working years or their retirement years around their peers. The first question I get asked most frequently is, I'm 55, but my spouse isn't. Can we buy in a 55 and over community? Generally speaking, the answer to this question is yes. Only one spouse has to be over 55. If you're buying new construction, the builder representative is going to be going over this information with you right up front. Now, if you're buying a used home, you will need to find this information out. And I'm going to keep repeating this throughout this video, but you need to make sure of these sorts of rules before you get too far into the purchase process. Now, on the MLS, every single listing in the MLS has a link to HOA contact people. Ask your realtor for the bylaws and the rules. And if they can't find them, and they aren't really always that easy to find, Ask for the phone number for the HOA and call them or have your realtor do it. This is really important. One thing I usually do is research old listings in the MLS to see if any other realtor in the past has uploaded those documents to the MLS. And it very often it is the case. If you look hard enough, almost always some realtor has uploaded them at some point in time. Now, sometimes I think it's best if the buyer actually makes this phone call themselves if they have additional questions, if at all possible, because you may come up with additional questions that are relevant to you and can be cleared up quickly in a simple phone call. Another question I get asked a lot, which is kind of similar, is I am not yet 55, but I found a home that I'd like to buy now. Can I buy it if I promise that I won't move in until after I turn 55? I've had this happen in the past and the answer we got at the time was no. So this was a single person who was like 54 and a half and she was interested in buying a home in a 55 and over community. And I think this is one of those rules where they kind of have to be concrete about who can buy and who can't. And the rule is usually that you have to be 55, not 54 and a half or not 50, um, no matter what you promise. You might just think to yourself, well, I'm just going to buy it anyway, and I don't care what they say. I'll just move in later, and who am I hurting? But most of these communities have an approval uh, process, and they simply won't approve you, and then the title company can't close the transaction. So this question brings me to the next question that I also get asked a lot, which is, I read online that only 80% of a 55 and over community can be 55 and over and that the rest of the community has to be under 55. So how do I find out what that percentage is now and if they have any spaces left for someone who is under 55? So this is a really common misconception. The rule isn't that only 80% can be 55 and over. The rule is that at least 80% must be 55 and over for the community to call itself 55 and over. It is actually up to the community to determine how they handle the remaining 20%. In my experience, the higher end communities, the guard gated single family home communities with a high HOA fee, lawn care is included, um, they do not allow people under 55 uh, to buy. 
typically. Now, having said that, one community in the area that does allow some percentage to be under 55 for sure, and this is a brand new home community, is the Palms at Saranoa. Uh, this is um, a DR Horton community. It is um, their Freedom Homes product, which is their 55 and over um, version of their regular uh, community. So this community in particular is located in Claremont. Now, another question that I get asked a lot is, I am over 55, but I really do not want to be with other people that are over 55. Um, I want to have a variety of different ages around me, but I want to live someplace where it's really quiet and safe and where everything is taken care of so I don't have to cut my own grass, and I need a single story home so that there are no stairs. Where else can I live? So honestly, what you're describing is a 55 and over community. Um, and it's kind of difficult to find all of those amenities in a non 55 and over community. And if you um, really need to have lawn care taken care of, uh, a place to start looking is a townhome. Um, and, but many people want, of course, that single story townhome. Um, but that's a little bit difficult to find. It's not impossible, but they're kind of rare. Well, townhomes are basically designed to maximize land use. So single story townhomes are going to have a much larger footprint than a two or three story townhome, which is going to go up and down. The only single story townhomes that I can think of tend to be much older, like from the 1980s. There seems to have been a trend of making single story townhomes in and around the 1980s. So for retirees, it's considerably less desirable as those older townhomes are usually outdated and kind of require a lot of work before you move in. So there are also some very nice luxury townhomes that have private inside elevators. So each unit having its own inside private elevator. And those can be a really good choice. I did make a video on one of those and I'm gonna link it above so that you can check that out. It won't be for sale anymore. That video is probably from about a year ago, uh, but it will give you an idea of what at least one community looks like. There are also condos, but if peace and quiet are really what you're looking for, that just is often not the best choice. It's a lot of people living really close together. And if you get a bad neighbor and you can hear what's going on in the walls, well, your quality of life might go down considerably. One thing to keep in mind if you are afraid of diving into 55 and over is that not everyone is going to be over 55. These are active adult communities where people are biking and playing tennis and taking classes and having book clubs. This is not like assisted living. As mentioned, you'll still have spouses who are younger and And you might also find that there are, again, that small percentage of people who are under 55, depending on what community you wind up in. And one other product to look into is, again, as I mentioned already, Freedom Homes Communities. That is the DR Horton uh, product for 55 and over. Um, they have a lot of amenities where lawn care is provided. Uh, the homes are always single story. And not all of them, not all of these communities are actually strictly 55 and over. And some of them aren't 55 and over at all. Like there is a Freedom Homes community in Sanford. Again, I'll link to that uh, video, um, which is that product. It's Freedom Homes, but it is not at all restricted by age. And another question that I get asked pretty frequently regarding the higher HOA fees of uh, these 55 and over communities is, can I pay lower HOA fees if I don't intend to make use of these amenities? So living in a 55 plus community means being part of that community and as such, all residents are given access to the community's amenities. And this means though, that you will have to pay your HOA fees regardless of whether you wanna use the pool or the tennis courts or pickleball. Um, this is actually something that tends to work out better for the community as it helps to ensure that the facilities are well maintained and that those who love using these amenities don't have to pay an unfair share of the costs even when everyone is allowed equal use. HOA fees are set by the individual neighborhoods within the community. Some may have different fees and thus will not be lowered for any single individual. As more people reach retirement age and remain in good health, active adult communities are becoming more and more popular in Florida and across the U.S. So the idea of a senior living community that offers or even promotes an active lifestyle is really appealing. Ditching exterior home maintenance chores frees residents of active adult communities to enjoy their retirement years and do more of the things that they love. Once again, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me and thanks for watching.